Duke and Florida State are meeting in a top 20 matchup in football. Not basketball, but football. We've got the 16th ranked Blue Devils and the 4th ranked Seminoles in a game that has major ACC title implications, could possibly be the first of two meetings between Duke and Florida State, in a game that even has college football playoff implications as well. If you had told me that this game would play a major role in how the ACC shaped out by season's end, if you told me that back in like August, I would have laughed at you. I would have thought you were crazy. But yet, here we are, number 16 and number 4 in a massive, massive game. A series where Florida State actually has dominated 19-0 all time against the Blue Devils. Yeah, they've won 19 straight over Duke. Never lost. And only one of those 19 games has been decided by one possession. That came back in 2017 in a 17-10 victory. So will Florida State make it 20 in a row over the Blue Devils? Or will Duke finally get their first win and shake up the entire college football world? Well, that is the question we're going to answer today. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. If you want the spread pick for this game between Duke and Florida State, every other college football game, spread picks that are on a 43-18 to run right now, beating out over 80% of the national handicappers, well, this is the place for you. Go sign up with a full year-long subscription. It's never too late to sign up. We'd love to have you become a part of our GE Nation. So let's dive into this game, guys. Duke and Florida State, top 20 matchup. Two teams that don't meet all that often, right? I mean, uh, 19 meetings all time. Again, Florida State has won every single one, but they weren't meeting every year. Uh, keep in mind, you know, this is the first year the ACC does not have divisions. Uh, typically, those two teams were in separate divisions of the ACC. So with cross-division games, it didn't happen every single year. Uh, but I'm glad it's happening this year, right? I think we all are. But it's both teams as good as they are. We'll start with Duke here. We'll start with the Blue Devils and start with their offense. Uh, I'll say, tell you this. If Duke wants a chance to win this game, they need Riley Leonard. They need Riley Leonard on the field. He got injured in that heartbreaking loss to Notre Dame a few weeks ago. Uh, injured in that game. Had the bye week. Didn't play last week against NC State. Duke did win that game. But they're going to need Riley Leonard out there, a guy that has over 900 passing yards, three touchdowns on the year, has rushed for over 300 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, they're saying that he has a very good chance of playing. There's a good chance he will play, but it's not confirmed yet, at least the filming of this video. So we're hoping that Leonard can be out there and that Duke can be at full strength. If he's not, they're going to have to rely on Henry Balin the fourth, who started last week against NC State but only went four of 12, playing just 33% of his passes for 102, 107 yards and two touchdowns. Not great. He's not going to come into Tallahassee and lead Duke to a victory. I can tell you that. Riley Leonard, he could. The Blue Devils are averaging over 198 rushing yards per game, though. That's kind of been their bread and butter this year. Jordan Waters has been phenomenal. Over 400 yards, nine rushing touchdowns. Jalen Calhoun and Jordan Moore both have over 300 reception yards. Lots of playmakers on this Duke offense, right? Like, Riley Leonard is the centerpiece. They're going to need him out there if they want to have a chance to win. But their running back core is good. Their wide receiver core is very good. Their offensive line has been phenomenal. They've only given up five sacks this year. So Duke has the pieces to hang in this game and contend with Florida State. But it's going to take a major shot. Their chances will take a major shot if Riley Leonard does not play. Florida State, on the other hand, look. Offensively, whether Riley Leonard plays or not, Florida State owns the offensive advantage. I don't really think that's up for debate. Florida State has been phenomenal offensively. They're averaging nearly 450 yards per game, 272 through the air, 177 on the ground. Jordan Travis playing lights out football, taking great care of the football, has thrown for over 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns, just one interception all year. I um, mean, so give the guy some credit. We knew he was going to have a big year. We knew Florida State, if they wanted to break through, this was going to be the year Mike Norvell needed to do it, and so far they are doing that. Again, Jordan Travis, a major reason for that. Trey Benson finally finding his footing, 463 yards, six touchdowns on the year. Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson both have been phenomenal, both over 300 reception yards. Hopefully, Johnny Wilson back on the field. Missed last week's win over Syracuse. Hopefully, we'll be back out there for this game against Duke. But those two players, Coleman and Wilson, have combined for nine of the 16 passing touchdowns from Florida State quarterbacks this year. So 9 of 16, over half of the touchdowns, reception touchdowns, have come from Johnny Wilson or Keon Coleman, which is a pretty impressive stat. Uh, this team, guys, is they're fast, they're electric, they're efficient. They've scored at least 31 points in every game they've played this year. Florida State's the real deal. And Duke's defense is going to have a very tough test in trying to stop them. The beauty of it for Duke is the fact that Mike Elko, their head coach, is a defensive-minded guy. And Duke's defense has been salty this year. I mean, they have been good. 
They're only giving up 298.5 yards per game. And again, if you're holding opponents on average to under 300 yards per game, you're doing something really, really good. And Duke is doing just that. They're only giving up 164 passing yards per game. Like, their secondary has been phenomenal. And you, and you, and you look at the schedule and you go, oh, they haven't played the best quarterbacks in the world. I would disagree. I mean, I know K. Klubnick's been, eh, so far at Clemson, but they shut them down in that week one opener. They played Sam Hartman. And while I lost to Notre Dame, Hartman did not have himself the best of games. Keep in mind, Duke was leading that game 14-13 to late in the fourth quarter. Held Notre Dame to under 230 passing yards on that day. So they have played some solid quarterbacks this year and contained them. Question is, can they do it again now on the road both those games, the Clemson and Notre Dame games, were at Duke on the road against Jordan Travis. This Duke's uh, line, uh, line this, the front seven has been pretty solid. 14 sacks on the year. They have forced nine turnovers on the year. Uh, they're doing a decent job of creating pressure, although I think many would want it to be a little bit better. But ultimately, what this comes down to is Duke is just a physical football team. And that is something that Mike Elko has instilled in his program. This is a team that is very physical. They win games based on their physicality and strength alone. This is a team that has not allowed over 21 points all year long. The most points they've allowed all year was 21 in that third, last loss, in, last second loss in Notre Dame. Again, allowing the game when he touched down with about 30 seconds left. Every other game, they've held their opponent under 21. That's really, really impressive. Can they do that again, though, against Florida State? I'm telling you this. If Duke finds a way to hold Florida State to 21 points or less, Duke is winning this game. Like, no doubt about it. If they hold Florida State to 21 or less, they are winning this game. Florida State, on the other hand, their defense has been solid, too. And it's a funny thing. We don't talk, I think, nearly enough about Florida State's defense uh, as we do their offense. I think it kind of gets overshadowed, just like some many other teams out there. We talk about North Carolina's offense way more than we do North Carolina's defense. They're actually playing good ball. But you look at Florida State. Yeah, they're giving up 363 yards per game. But like Duke, they've kind of won a lot of games based on physicality alone. Yeah, they allowed 29 points in that fluke uh, game against Boston College. That was a weird, weird game. Bad weather game. Caught them off guard, whatever. Outside of that, the most points they've allowed to an opponent this year was 24, coming twice to LSU and Clemson. Both of those victories. This is a team that is allowing just 141 rushing yards per game, which some would say is good, some would say is bad. I say it's right in the middle. That's not the best mark in the world, right? And if Duke can get over 150 rushing yards on the day, I think they win the game, personally. Florida State's got to find a way to slow down that Duke rushing attack that's rushing for nearly 200 rushing yards per game. They also have to find a way to create pressure on the quarterback. Because let me tell you this, if Riley Leonard does not play, I think he will. But if he doesn't, get after Balin, man. Get after Henry Balin IV. Go attack him. Rattle him early. Tallahassee at night, it's going to be rocking. If you can create pressure on the quarterback, and really whoever's quarterback, and make them struggle, force Duke into some second and third and long situations, you win the game. Because while Duke will rack up some yards on the ground, I think Florida State's going to find a way to contain it. They'll definitely stack the box and load the box if Leonard isn't playing because they won't really fear the pass as much. So that's something that Florida State has going for them right now. I think if you can take away the run game, regardless of who's quarterback, they're going to be in trouble because it's going to be a very, very dangerous and electric atmosphere. And Tallahassee, obviously not an easy place to play ever, but certainly not when Florida State is really, really good. So what's going to happen, guys? Saturday night, what is going to happen here? I, I really think we're in for a fun matchup. And it, it, if anything, just it, it appreciate the significance of this game, the uniqueness of this game, to have Duke ranked 16th in the country, to have Florida State back as a national power, top four in the country, a legit playoff contender. Appreciate what we've got here. The last time we saw a game between these teams at this magnitude was back in 2013 when Florida State and Duke met in the ACC championship game, and Florida State dominated in that game. I think many entering Saturday night would love to see a Duke win, right? I think many would love that. They'd love to see the Cinderella run continue for the Blue Devils. They'd love to see them shake up the playoff standings. They'd love to see them just shake up the entire college football world. But ultimately, I don't see that happening. Ultimately, I don't see Duke coming on the road and winning this game. Whether Ray Leonard plays or not, Florida State will win this game. A night game in Tallahassee is not easy. Florida State owns, the, obviously, the home field advantage, which is huge. They own the offensive advantage, and I think they can match for uh, Duke's physicality. I think they can match the toughness of Duke defensively. So while the game might be close for a little bit, I think ultimately Florida State wins by at least 10 points. At least 10 points. The Seminoles get a huge top 20 win, big resume-boosting win as well, and they improve to 7-0 and on the year with a very favorable schedule left ahead of them getting them one step closer each week to the college football playoff. 
So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Grid Iron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Do not miss out on those. 43 to 18 run against the spread, and we want you to join our GE Nation and take advantage of those picks. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah! yeah.